Assalamu alaikum everyone, myself Dr. Ayaz Ahmed and uh, welcome to a tech lens section of PMDP. Today I am going to discuss with you a very important topic and many candidates face difficulties what to do if uh, they are treating a child with a metabolic disorder or hyperammonemia. So you all know it's very difficult and you know there is no simple test that will indicate a diagnosis of a metabolic dis disorder so always correlate your findings uh, so um question arises what should i do and what fluid should i give and obviously what initial investigations uh, should i send again serum ammonia, ammonia give you the clue and uh, but it's not uh, raised in every metabolic disorder so just start with some scenarios a four month old presented in ed with a history of poor feeding and seizures on examination gcs is 12 investigations are normal crp is 5 but ammonia level is 180 so the question is what should i do now And the next scenario is 11 month old with a history of increased work of breathing and poor feeding presented in ED. Chest examination is normal. Glucose is 50. There is the respiratory alkalosis. And what should I do? What fluids should I give? So again, uh, in the third scenario, a three year old with the known urea cycle defect presented in the ED with seizures. He had a cough and cold from the last few days with poor oral intake. How should I manage this child in ED and what fluids should I give? So let's start with the serum uh, ammonia levels. So normal values should be less than 50 micromole per liter, but mildly raised values are common up to 80. And uh, always what will be your next step? Repeat the plasma ammonia immediately if it's more than 150 in children and more than 200 in neonates. And while you are sending the second sample, start your management. So what you will do, stop the feeds, give 2 ml per kg bolus of 10% glucose IV initially, even if the blood glucose is normal because here we have to prevent the catabolism. Give, after that, give 10 ml per kg of 0.9% uh, sodium chloride, but if the child is shocked, give 20 ml per kg, give maintenance fluids plus any deficit and the fluid of choice should be 10% glucose with 0.9% saline. And if the child is hyperammonemic, then most likely you will start the sodium benzoate and sodium phenyl butyrate. I will discuss with you in the next few slides and uh, that will give a sodium load. So every, every fluid should be given as then 10% glucose. And remember, check the blood sugar early and aim to keep the blood sugar in the range of 6 to 10. I already uh, gave you the reason. And if the plasma glucose exceeds 14 and there is a glycosuria start, IV insulin infusion rather than reducing the glucose intake. The dose is 0 0.025 unit uh, per kg per hour. But if there is the evidence of lactic acidosis, always seek advice for metabolic consumption before giving the insulin because lactic acidosis can be exacerbated by insulin and then it may be necessary to reduce the concentration of glucose infusion in these circumstances. In the meanwhile, if the repeat ammonia is more than 200, give the loading doses of sodium phenyl butyrate, sodium benzoate, arginine and carnitine, followed by the continuous infusion. And if the initial plasma ammonia is more than 500 or more than 300 with encephalopathy, transfer immediately to the PQ as this child is the candidate for ventilation and hemofiltration. And remember, avoid hyperventilation as alkalosis enhances ammonia toxicity. Similarly, avoid giving bicarbonate if pH is more than 7.2. And usually we repeat the plasma ammonia measurement every three hours. If this has risen, then intensive therapy, example, hemofiltration will be required. And if the ammonia is same or has fallen, continue with the same treatment and monitor three hourly. The ammonia is 100 to 200. Follow guidance of nutrition pathway. That is uh, aim to give 100 kilocalorie per kg per day, preferably as a enteral feeds, even during hemofiltration. Energy weight is an appropriate protein free feed to use during stabilization, but it is not suitable for fat oxidation disorders. And parental nutrition can be given initially as an intralipid. So ammonia and pH are normalized and stable, start protein or amino acids at 0.5 gram per kg per day, or 40 ml per kg per day of standard milk polycal added to give 10% carbohydrate with the remaining volume as energy weight. Please remember patient with inherited uh, metabolic disease should not have a protein free nutrition for longer than 48 hours as this can lead to protein catabolism 
and accessibility of the compensation. And here is some extra points. Uh, raised ammonia without acidosis, minimal ketones and lactate and normoglycemia suggest but not but is not diagnostic of a urea cycle disorder. And similarly, if raised ammonia with ketoacidosis and hypo, no more hyperglycemia suggest organic acidemia. Summary, always give uh, bolus of 10% dextrose and then start maintenance with the 10% dextrose with saline. Always contact uh, the senior or uh, person who is specialized in uh, metabolic diseases. Now I think if a child presented to you with a suspected metabolic disorder or hyperammonemia, you will be more confident to manage this child. You think, is it not easy? It's easy and easy. These are my references. Thank you very much. Allah Hafiz.